Before we move on, be sure to subscribe and with notifications on so you don't miss any of our videos. Small fish profit from the rest of the tree. Here they can hide from cormorants and herons. There's no need for beavers to build dams along the Danube. There are plenty of ponds and lakes of sufficient size and depth. When the wind turns to a northerly, it brings snow and more. With the north wind, the Danube's winter guests arrive. Hundreds of cormorants spend the winter on the floodplain, drifters along the river, always in search of new fishing grounds. Here, they always find food until the ice cuts them off from the backwaters. All the stagnant waters are now sealed up. Only the main channel is still open, but fishing in the strong current is tedious. Herring gulls also travel far. A few weeks ago, they may have been on the North Sea or the Baltic coast. With heavy beak blows, the gull has stunned a fish. It is too big to eat out in the middle of the river. The cormorant has a solution, and he loses no time. He knows his kin. The only thing still flowing in the floodplain is the snow, driven by the wind across the ice. On cold, windy days, the beaver stays at home. But beavers are not mammals, they do not hibernate. Hunger keeps driving them out into the cold, and they have to work incessantly to keep their hole in the ice open. It's not a happy meal. The beavers are lazy now, in a bad mood, and not very nice to each other. After lunch, they quickly vanish into the burrow, into their beds.
The otter has good use for the beaver's hole. Winter doesn't slow him down in the least. Such winter joys are unknown to the beaver. Quite obviously, this is not the beaver's favorite season. Even in summer, beavers are not particularly fast, but now they really take their time. Peevishness and pure joy simply don't see eye to eye. These two won't make good playmates. Gradually, the Danube begins to swell again. The ice on the backwaters is melting away. When the calls of wild geese fills the air one morning, spring has arrived, literally overnight. The white-tailed eagles have not left their territory since autumn. In late winter, the female has begun to clean up the nest. Now the nest is being repaired with fresh material. That's precision work. The structure has to withstand even strong storms. Year after year, the pair keep extending the nest. Before mid-March, two eggs are laid. On the higher slopes where the ground is dry, bees now find their first feast, a flowering dogwood bush. As long as the sunlight can penetrate the canopy, carpets of wild flowers cover the forest floor. Snowdrops. Christmas roses and hyacinths. Come April, the entire forest smells of wild garlic. In May, orchids shine in the grass along the dry rim of the felt plain. Since last summer, a meanwhile forgotten treasure has been buried here. The spring sun will bring it to light. The baby pond turtles have hatched in autumn and waited underground motionless for the warmth of spring. The tiny creatures are no bigger than a euro coin. Without turning left or right, they hurry straight down to the water. 
This is the riskiest hour of their lives. There's no lack of predators in the floodplain. Saved. When you're that small, hiding is your only choice. The flood channels are still almost dry. The snow melt in the Alps has not yet set in. But when the spring flood finally does arrive, it's overwhelming. The Danube's might can be frightful. Once more, a stretch of bank sags away, providing the kingfisher precisely with what he's looking for and cannot find anywhere else. Only where the river remains untamed can the unique animals and plants of the floodplain find a place to live. Again, the flood has created a fresh gravel bank. A brand new breeding place for the plover. Floods come, floods go. And they come again. That's life. That's a living river. As long as the Danube is allowed to live, the flooded forest will continue to surprise us with new secrets.